everyone, I'm Singai Shu and welcome to the Numex Studio in New York City. I am so excited to introduce to you Laura Gates. Hi, Laura. Hi. Laura is a wonderful somatic movement educator and trainer and a former professional dancer with the Lara Lubovitch Dance Company and also a visual artist in your spare time. Uh, and you join us from Norway today. Um, I bumped into this work uh, many years ago. I, I read one of Thomas Hanna's books and everything about it just sort of resonated with me. It just made so much sense, his approach to, um, to the potential of the body to sense itself, um, uh, monitor itself, change itself. Um, and and it, it, his techniques of movement to do this really involve um, a number of ingredients. Slow motion is one of them so that your brain has a chance to feel the details and, and um, pay attention. So I would say slow motion and paying attention are two big ingredients of this technique. He developed pendiculation um, and it has some other ingredients too, but it's working with the body gently, but but it's powerful because it really changes the resting state of the muscles, which means the muscles have their full mobility. It decompresses joints. It brings nourishment to all the tissue. And in that process, you start to undo some of the patterns that have imprinted on the body. And that's our history, right? Our, our emotional history, whether it's emotional trauma or physical trauma, and all of us have some of that imprinted in us and that results in con contractive patterns and they get stuck our brain forgets how to lengthen certain muscle groups because of these patterns and they kind of go offline a little bit we have trouble noticing them so forth so the this work is great for going in there and undoing kind of youthing the body and restoring the motion that ought to be there which affects literally every system of the body so it's all about health on every level but it's also about undoing um, the contractive patterns that result from repetitive motion. And I know as a musician, you know about that, right? With thousands and tens of thousands of hours of practice on whatever instrument you've been practicing on, your body adapts to that instrument and you, get, you can get muscle habituation. And sometimes that can be a problem. It can cause pain or shorten careers and so forth. So I've worked with a lot of musicians and I'm always excited to work with musicians because I know I, I might very well help to extend their careers and give them tools to um, take care of themselves well and, and restore motion to their body and probably free up their playing. That's been the feedback I've gotten, right? It's like, yeah, but playing felt differently uh, after doing somatics. So, so it, it, it's these tools, the best self-care and repair tools I've ever run into. It's certainly saved my life completely. Um, I have a fairly substantial scoliosis. I danced with one. Um, and now with an aging scoliosis at age 70, I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with a lot of symptoms that come along with the package of an aging scoliosis. So arthritis, stenosis, um, uh, unstable vertebra, um, some chronic pain, uh, uh, et cetera, and wear and tear on joints, uneven wear and tear. And this, with this work, I'm able to take my pain away. I'm able to improve my scoliosis a lot. I've restored tons of mobility where there was no movement at all. So it really improves your relationship to yourself. It's this loving self-care you can give to yourself. And you calm your nervous system. You shift yourself into parasympathetic. And we can talk about you know those aspects of the nervous system. Um, and that parasympathetic state is is the one in in which you've you've calmed uh, everything. The the heart rate, digestion is encouraged, and elimination. Um, the muscles are relaxing, blood flow. So it's it's nourishing, calming, resting. <clears throat> and um, yeah, that's my mission is just to to bring it to as many people as possible. And the beauty is it works for everyone, like every fitness level it works for every age. It's like high powered athletes, professional dancers. Wow, do they appreciate this work? Of course they do, right? It's good for balance, coordination, repair, uh, injury prevention, big time. So um, 
uh, and it also works for somebody 90 years old with a very fragile body that needs to, to, to work very delicately with himself or someone injured. You can start with the truth of where the muscles are and the body is at that time and work from there. We don't push into pain. Uh, we don't even pull into stretch. We, we address the muscles in the nervous system in a, a different way, a gentler way, but really quite powerful for changing the body. Yeah, I love that the uh, the real focus is on health. And so regardless of what the trauma is or whether there is any trauma at all, the idea that we're all trying to find a place of, of more health. And I loved what you were saying earlier about um, how you feel that you can inhabit your body and brain and nervous system more fully. Isn't it great that if we can free the tension in our body, it actually frees up the tension in our mind as well. What is your viewpoint on the polyvagal nervous system? Well, the polyvagal is, is um, the vagus nerve is a part of, of that parasympathetic, the rest and digest and, and I don't know a great deal about the vagus nerve, although I'm starting to study it because it's just fascinating. It's 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 pretty new stuff, actually. People are just starting to pay attention, and it's it's kind of unique as a set of nerves that you know goes from the top right through and interacts with organs all the way down and back up. So there's, I get this feeling there's this massive communication from different parts of the body via this this nerve and if you can speak to one part of it you can affect other parts we know the whole body and nerves, nervous system is one thing right if you contract a muscle in your neck you'll feel a response in your foot and vice versa when i work with people that have um you know an injury or contraction or an old habituation if we can release it in the shoulder suddenly their hip lets go and vice versa right that stuff happens all the time so um so it's really how we're designed yeah and, uh, and the vagus nerve is just more more of the same of that um and the the sympathetic nervous system yeah it's it's its job to you know moves forward and get it done and 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 react and and but it's also the part of our nervous system that triggers you know fight or flight if if we have perceived danger um that stress response is to you know shift our hormonal state and get us ready to react or act or do what we need to do which is which is great but one thing about that that um that throws us into our limbic brain and our limbic brain is sort of that primitive you could think reptile brain they some people still call it that the the brain stem it's really the home of trauma and and at that point <clears throat> your body's geared up to do what it needs to do in an emergency um, but what happens is your prefrontal cortex gets kind of put offline for a minute so which is the reason if we're if we're all frazzled and scared or nervous or angry or or whatever it is we, we can't think very well right everybody knows that feeling and that's because the prefrontal cortex has just sort of uh, been detached. But the way to bring it back is through sensuality and the somatic part of the brain. If, if you do something like rub your hands together and feel the heat or place your hands on your body and feel your breath move or wiggle your toes on the floor, just bring your attention to that for a second. And suddenly a part of that prefrontal cortex, the medial prefrontal cortex is the somatic part and it starts connecting it all back together again. So even with something small like that, bringing attention to the feet wiggling or whatever it is, or the breath, you, you bring it back together and then you have access to all parts of your brain and take yourself out of fight or flight pretty quick. So but it's, it's a nice, yeah, just a nice understanding to think, oh, I have this choice. I could bring myself back quick if I needed to. Yeah, that's awesome. I was yeah. watching this um, YouTube interview with uh, Stephen Porges, and uh, I, I was intrigued because he's a clarinetist. So I was like, okay, so he understands breath work. Yeah, too. <laughs> like the whole point of my wanting to play is to get into a more aware state of being. And it makes me feel very alive to be creating sound in the moment. And that I think is what, what you're feeling too when you're doing somatic movement. Let's have a demo of what um, a sitting somatic exercise 
would feel like. And then I'd love to explore some parallels with uh, some music that, that we can talk about. Great, great. Yeah, I, um, there's, you can, um, you can make use of somatic movement in a variety of positions, sitting and standing included. We're most often on the floor, um, only because that takes us out of our usual relationship to gravity and what's familiar and lets the brain consider um, muscles and weight and gravity in a different way. So then when you bring it, then having made a change in your body, when you bring it up, you, your brain gets to compare. Um, but that's somatic snacks, like little five minute movement bits. Right, it doesn't replace a full meal, right? A snack, but it's nice. It's a, it's a, it's a pickup. So, um, so let's think about um, the torso and the pelvis here for this one. So if you're sitting comfortably um, in probably a padded firm chair would be best, not a real squishy chair, just so your, your pelvis has a little uh, feedback, but padded so it's comfortable. So think about your sit bones. And if you just press one sitting bone down a little bit, so you feel that one and then shift to the other side and feel the other one. So those are sort of the feet of your pelvis, if you will. And you can even imagine tiny little feet under your sitting bones. So they'll be the, the, the feet of our torso. And now place a hand low on your belly and another hand on your low ribs so that you have a high and low hand, just a, you know, a little space between them. And as you inhale, would you fill your belly and the space between your hands? And notice if you let it, it will rock your pelvis forward on those little pelvic feet and arch your back a bit. And then slowly release that contraction in your back to let your pelvis rock back to whatever your neutral is. Good. Place the hands on the low ribs. Let's do this again, but this time we're going to let the rib cage be involved. So as you inhale, as you expand the belly, arch the back, rock forward on the pelvis, and let your shoulders contract back a bit too. So you're contracting the whole torso just a bit, and now slowly release that. So we've just, we've just exaggerated the muscles in the back of the body, the green light reflex muscles, those ones that drive you forward and get the, the job done. Good. And now let's reverse it. Take a high and low hand again, and let's create the red light reflex. Everybody knows this reflex, it's startle response, but let's do it slowly so we get to study it. So on your next generous exhale, would you sink the belly in, tighten it so the distance between your hands shortens. It'll tuck your tail and rock you backwards of your sit bones just a bit and slowly release that. Take your time on this release so it's a smooth, slow, mindful release, and your brain's really focusing on that. Good, let the arms drop down by your side. Let's make that reflex, red light reflex again, but let the shoulders join in. So take a breath in to get ready, and on your exhale, sink the center again. Tighten the belly, tucking the tail. Let your shoulders move forward. Let your head stay on center. And if you do, the back of the neck will contract just a bit. And now slowly release that. And notice it's shortened you, so as you, as you let it go in slow motion, you'll get a bit taller. Good, so that red light reflex, that's the one that responds to certain kinds of anxiety and stress and protects the body, right? So we're going into those reflexes so that the brain gets them, but it's doing it voluntarily, and then we teach the brain how to let them go so the brain doesn't get stuck there. Let's add some arms and turn it into a fun movement. So arms by the side. Would you spiral the arms open outward? You can think of leading with your thumbs. And if you keep going, the back of the shoulders will scoop in the shoulder blades towards the spine. And go ahead and inhale into the belly, the chest. And now slowly let that go. So we've added those arms and let the arms and shoulders relax. Let's reverse it, red light reflex. On your next generous exhale, sink the center, spiral the arms inwards, little fingers leading until you feel the front of the shoulders curl and tighten towards the sternum. And slowly release that, feeling the front of the body lengthen in smooth controlled motion and the shoulders in front melt, the rotation melt and let it go.
Good. Let's do the one we just did and add a detail. On the next exhale, sink the center, tuck the tail, roll the arms inwards, little fingers leading, curl the shoulders forward, pause there, and on the next inhale, shrug the shoulders to the ears, pause there, and as you continue to breathe, would you draw your head down into the center? So we're smooshing the body small, gently, and now very slowly release that. How slowly? Over the course of several breaths, begin to melt, to gently lengthen, decompress the body, to let the shoulders slowly roll open, let the pelvis come back to neutral, and let the shoulders relax completely. Good. So now let's finish with opening the shape one more time. So as you inhale, would you spiral the arms open? And this time, open the mouth, invite a yawn for the jaw, the front of the shoulders, the chest, the belly, <gasps> even the pelvic floor, the hands and the feet. Let them all yawn. And slowly melt that. Let the timing of the yawn rule. Sense the back of the body giving up its tension and letting go. Good. So there's a little red and green light exercise, somatic exercise, which addresses the rotator cuff and the shoulder. And these are rather important muscles to pendiculate in front because lymphatic drainage goes right through those pecs. Um, and so for those muscles to be open and juicy means more blood's getting in there. You've literally increased your lymphatic drainage. So that's about lymphatic health, which is immune health, breast health, Lots of important things. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Laura. I'm playing Spiegel im Spiegel, Mirror and Mirror by Arvel Pert. And um, the reason I thought it would be a good pairing for us is because it is very much in the slow motion uh, idea of really sensing every little sound and then being able to improve the quality of the resting state. So, um, this structure is very simple. There is just the D going up, which we can think of as the green light reflex and then going down, which we could say is the red light uh, reflex. And then it just gets longer. And so we start having bigger lines. And then by the end, we have very long lines. But also the other way that it expands is that um, there is a triad. So every time the phrase ends, it ends on the same three notes in a very expanded form. And also that um, the idea of three notes for me feels very stable. It's the trinity, three is the magic number, um, it's community, it's the strongest, most stable shape when we're talking about gravitational pull. And so this idea of always resting on these three notes gives it a, a real sense of weight um, to the phrase. So here's a, here's a phrase of, what this piece sounds like.
Mm. Yeah, so that for me feels like um, doing a somatic movement and sound. I would agree with you. I, I love Argo Part's work. I, I always have. And I love what happens to me when I'm listening to it is, is, um, it's that sort of wait. It's like you've, a phrase is finished and you know something's coming, but you don't know quite when it is. And so there's this like kind of extended lengthening. And as I'm waiting for it, I'm finding I'm noticing my breath or I'm getting a, a, um, an awareness of my own internal state as I wait. There's some, something about that there's, you know the, ne the next note is coming, but there's an irregularity to it that makes you pause and ponder for a moment before it comes. I, this, I love that about it. Yeah. Is that, is that related to uh, the term interoception? Interoception, I would say it is, yeah. So proprioception is our, is our awareness, the aspect of our uh, intelligence that's about moving, like the proprioception of your fingers on the piano. You, you feel the pressure, you know where they are. Your sense of weight as you're walking or running or dancing, like that's, and then the interception, there's sort of extraception and interception. The interception is the internal aspect of that. So you might feel, you know, subtle internal um, sensations as you're moving, or you might feel something as subtle as your heartbeat. If you, if you, you know, paused for a second or hung out and just listened, it's like, oh, there's my heartbeat or, or your pulse or, or the, uh, the movement of your body in response to your breath or your diaphragm, something like that. And I find his music kind of takes me to those internal sense. You know, I'm, I find myself breathing with those slow, beautiful cycles and rhythms. And then sort of, and then I'm like, oh, waiting, waiting for the next note. Ah, oh, and then I actually I get to exhale and then it happens, right? It's a, yeah. It's a nice to wait a pregnant pause in a way before the phrase is ended. It's beautiful. Yeah. Thinking about how to show the the um, space that is not empty as actually very full of resonance and vibration. What you're also defining for us is the sense of time in a more pronounced way so that we're, we're actually feeling the movement of time and not just letting something go. Right, exactly. And you definitely are feeling the movement of time. And, and with pendiculation, that slow lengthening phase of the muscle where you're paying attention to the sensations all the way to a full resting state. That's literally the, the mechanism that does a reset in your brain and, and changes the brain signal to the muscle and the resting state. So it's, it, it's actually what makes the change happen neurologically. So it's it's interesting. That's the that's the big deal in pendiculation is that that noticing of the feeling of of time as it moves and the sensation of your muscles, of course. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for this fabulous uh, pairing of ideas. And thank you so much for the the really innovative work you're doing with music and music education and thinking about it in some, some new and wonderful ways. I so appreciate what you do as well. Not to mention your playing is gorgeous. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Laura. <laughs>